Ladies and gentlemen, I welcome you all back. And like always, I appreciate your time. I appreciate you spending it here. And I respect your time. I know everybody's time is valuable, and the last thing I want to do is waste it, any of it. But with that being said, if you find this video informative or educational, uh, to help me out, I ask you to subscribe and or hit the like button. If you have any experiences or questions that you want to share or ask, feel free to reach out to me or anybody for that matter in the comment section. We're all on the same team. If any of you guys can help out through you know, a, re a comment response, feel free. Doesn't it just have to be me? We're all on the same team. All right, guys. With that being said, I'm going to go over what we're going to be discussing in this video and which weedless wacky rig hook to me is the best. Alrighty, so after a fierce internal debate that lasted many moons, uh, I finally figured out a way to structure this video on how I'm going to go over each one of the hooks. So what I decided to do is I arranged them on how they're designed. So on the left hand side we have your safety pin style where the weed guard is folded over, bent, and it goes up and over the barb or the shank. So that's your first column on the left hand side. These here, these are your metal weed guards. These, they're open metal weed guards. They're not pinched or flexed or forced into any locking position. Uh, these three happen to be made out of that nickel titanium, nitinol, or memory wire if you will. Uh, to the right of them, these are your fiber weed guards. And same thing with the right hand side as well. Your fiber weed guards, nylon, bristle, basically, you know, stiff fishing line, if you will. All right, so with that being said, those are the different styles. Now, I don't have every single weedless wacky hook. I haven't used every single one, but the 13 here that I'm gonna go over pretty much cover everything else in the market. There's a Tesoyo, there's a Moto, there's a Hay another Hayabusa, there's two different kinds of, two or three different kinds of Gamakatsus and a Mustad weedless hook. And these 13, thankfully, uh, will cover every one of their designs. And what I hope to do is, you know, I, I hope to show you why I like them, why I prefer one versus the other, and I'll narrow it down to uh, two or three in terms of what I find to be the absolute best on the table. And hopefully that helps you out. Hopefully it saves you money from experimenting. Uh, hopefully it saves you from lost fish and headaches and hang-ups and snags. All right, so let's get started. All right, so on the top left we have the, the Gamakatsu Weedless Wide Gap Finesse Hook. Uh, this hook has jumped up in price significantly. Like a five or a six pack used to be three bucks. Then it kind of moved to four fifty. Now in Cabela's are seven dollars a pack. All right. This this was the the most popular and probably the earliest one available on, on the market. Uh, that's the one I started with. And if you look at that, that's the last one I own. I've probably bought maybe a hundred, two hundred, I don't know, over the last you know five, ten years. I haven't bought these in quite quite some time now. Uh, this is the VMC Weedless Wacky Hook. Uh, this is the only hook on the table that I would feel giving feel comfortable giving to a child. You can give this to a two-year-old as a toy, and he'll probably not hook himself because the weed guard is so freaking strong that there's almost no way to trip it. I mean, if you're using a finesse-sized one like something like this, it's almost worse. It's a smaller hook, so you may downsize tackle, but the weed guard's stiffer since it, at least when you hit the weed guard here, it's a little bit easy to move. But here, no, it's stiffer. It takes more force to open up the weed guard. So you tell me if somebody tested this, that hook design before they hit, they hit the market with it. This is the Falcon Weedless K hook. Uh, this is a, a good heavy cover hook has a weed guard that once it trips, it swings out of the way. Nice little feature there. Um, the hookup ratios on this where I've had to use a hook of this size and style have been pretty good. It's a good hook. Not my favorite, but a good one. This is the decoy bodyguard hook. This is one of the lighter wire hooks. The weed guard is also very, very thin and flexible. It's a good hook 
but like every one of these weedless wacky hooks that has the, the safety pin style, it has a, an expiration date. You only get a couple fish out of it before it's so bent up, mangled, and deformed or breaks off. All right, moving along. This here, these are the Gamakatsu 329. And believe it or not, these two hooks are different. The one on the bottom is a lighter gauge weed guard, both nickel titanium. And it's actually a more of a finesse hook diameter. Uh, both of these hooks are pretty good. One of, one of my favorites, this is probably the number three hook on my list. Um, very good hookup ratios, uh, very good hookup to land ratios. The weed guard performs very well. Uh, one thing I do have a complaint on though is, and if you look here, I'm pushing out that weed guard out the back. So basically what decoy did with this hook, sorry, what Gamakatsu did with this hook was they molded on a little piece of rubber. Uh, they might have tied down some thread and then, you know, push the weed guard through, it can back out. And <laughs> I've actually had fish push the freaking weed guard out. And I, I swear to God, it happened twice in two days where the weed guard, that piece of rubber, slid down the shank of the hook, went up against the barb, and I lost both of the fish. And both of these fish were probably in the four to five pounds class, 22 to 23 inch smallmouth in a river. So, I mean, they were trophy size smallmouth. And I'm convinced, I'm convinced that the one smallmouth swam up river, told his buddy how to do it, and that's how he hosed me. I swear, these, these fish are smart. At least I like to think so, that way I don't look too dumb. This is the Hayabusa spin muscle. Uh, this hook here, fiber weed guard. Uh, the one thing you'll find with fiber weed guards, and my big complaint with them is, if you fish them a lot, and now, I'm not a big Senko style guy. I don't throw a ton of these. Um, I will do um, like, a, like a hot shot style rig, which I call the Scooby-Doo rig, where I'll nose hook it. And with the weight here, I'll bottom bounce it and drift it in current. Um, or I'll a wacky rig with my little Scooby-Doo rig. With a, it's, it's almost like, a, at that point, a weighted wacky hook. But... What I find is since I'm fishing it a lot, whether I'm bottom bouncing and nose hooking, these fiber weed guards get real soft. And this is where some of these designs, and you guys might hate me for what I'm going to say about the owner hook, but when it comes down to how long you can fish them and how they hold up while you're fishing them for extended periods, that's the biggest deal breaker for me. How strong, how stable, how consistent is that weed guard as you're fishing it. So this Hayabusa, uh, what I've found is I've gone through about two packs of these, and this is one of my last remaining ones, but they break at that bend. I have broken seven, eight of these hooks on the hook set, and I'm only using seven or eight pound test. Uh, sorry, six to eight pound test. So, uh, with a uni knot, so I'm only fishing two to three pounds of drag. And I've been breaking them. I, I stopped using them. It was a decent design, but the, the hook and hold... Um, the catch ratio, the hook to catch ratio, hook to land ratio, wasn't all that great. I found with the tiny barb and the small bend here, the fish were able to throw it very easily. Moving along, this is the trocar. This is one of the last ones I went to. Um, I had originally assumed that its design was identical to the owner. And we all know what happens when you assume it makes an ass out of me. So I had avoided the trocar. And I had posted a review on Stripers Online with a, it's pretty much the same comparison. And I even said, you know, I'll stick to the decoy or whatnot. But I ended up saying, you know what, I saw them on sale, I picked them up. And lo and behold, the Eagle Claw Trocar is by far and away my favorite weedless wacky hook on the board. You know, not far and away because the decoy comes in at a close second. But the owners... The owner, what the owner has going for it is it's not necessarily a brittle hook. To break this hook, it takes, not only is it a strong hook that doesn't like to flex much, but you'll find out you'll straighten them out more than they'll break and you can bend them back. And you'll find that, that you'll probably have to do that often because as you fish this hook, this weed guard, the way it's tied on, it's, it's almost as if it's a hinge. 
and then it'll just lay flat like that. And then you lift it up like this, and then you can blow on it and it'll go down. I mean, you see how it kind of stays up and then it'll go down and stay down. As you fish it and it gets wet, there, there's nothing there. It might as well not even have a weed guard. Seriously, I'm just I'm not even putting any pressure on it, and that point is catching my finger. I will never buy another. I, I the last time I'll buy this these pack of hooks was to do this review because I stopped buying them and I ran out. This is the Zapu Super Captain. Uh, interesting hook, and yes, I'm aware you're supposed to trim the weed guard. But if you trim the weed guard, you now have, a, like if you trim it back to here, you have a lot of opening for branches because what happens is the hook will come over and get on its side. If this isn't down far enough, it'll, you know, if it's up like this, it gets on its side and you're catching that tree branch. Um, and with it, how the weed guard is oriented, see how it's tip up, kind of going up like this? Your knot's here. The grass is coming down and going to get laid up on that. Whereas if you look at how the trocar, how the orientation of it is kind of downward, it sheds the grass better. Zappu makes great hooks. I'm not a fan of this design. I'm a much bigger fan of the titanium weed guard, Zappu. But like everything else, it has its pluses and minuses. As you fish it, that weed guard is just going to bend out to the side. And now I can't get it to stay put. It bends out and it stays there. And it doesn't take much effort to do that. It's a good hook. It's a very well positioned and well tuned. And by tuned, I mean the strength in which it takes to compress it design. But since that's not fixed on the shank very well, it's a deal breaker. Because again, sometimes it gets on its side. And if that weed guard is up like this, you're getting hung up. And again, if you're just fishing for small bass, if you're fishing in a pond that you get tons and tons and tons of bites, stuff like that doesn't matter. But when you're fishing for some big, big fish, and the last thing you want to do is waste a cast where you get hung up and you have to pull out a branch, now you put down that hole. Now they know that you're there. Something strange in their environment occurred. They're not going to chew for a little bit. So when you're chasing the really big fish, you need every advantage in your favor to get them to bite. So this is kind of where I'm basing my opinion or formulating my opinion through the experiences that I've had with these hooks. And this here is the, uh, this is another decoy. It's kind of a long shank uh, worm hook. I don't use them often, but they do have their place. Uh, if you want to take like a robo worm or a finesse ro uh, worm, slide it up the shank a little bit so the hook is further back, you can get away with doing that. Um, you can also take some of the, let's see if I can grab one real quick, something like this. You're going to chuckle because it's almost like they were designed for it. The nose of these already has like a little pilot hole right there. And what you could do is, just take this hook and just run it down. That was a crappy job, but you get the idea. And now fish this weightless. Uh, really cool little way to do it, and it works pretty well. Uh, this is the only real situation I generally use this hook for and it's nice. I'll even put a little bit of glue on the shank to keep that bait from sliding down. Although it does, you take advantage of the little tag end of the fiber guards right there. It almost makes it like a little bait keeper. Not the greatest in the world, but it, it, it does the trick. And this here, this is the Decoy Finesse HD. For the longest time, this was my favorite hook. It has a perfectly designed weed guard that lasts indefinitely. It will soften up, but it's got enough oomph to shed the grass. It has the proper orientation so that way when you're bringing it through, it's going to shed grass instead of collect grass. It's durable. I mean, this is probably after 30 fish and pliers, of, you know, you know, using pliers to get the hook out. Um, 
the only thing that I don't like about it is I'm starting to run out. <laughs> um, and if that's something that's a downfall, it's too shabby. But so this, this hook here and this trocar here, in my opinion, are the two best hooks on the table. They have strong wires. They're not going to break on you. Uh, they have clean barbs, so it's easy to set. They have weed guards that are very functional, and they last a long time in the water. So as they get soft after being soaked in water for 10, 15, 20 minutes, they still remain functional. Um, they have a nice gap. They hold baits very well, and they hold fish very well. So once you hook up with these fish, that low profile barb, that clean barb is easy to set and it actually holds very well. So if you're going to be buying a weedless wacky hook, and I know everybody in the world loves these owners. I love owner as a brand as well. I would probably put this, this weedless wacky hook um, right up there with the trocar. I'll, I'll be honest with you. If the owner had the same way of tying that weed guard, I would have never tried the trocar. I would have never tried half the other hooks in this table because this may have been one of the better weed hooks and weedless hooks I've ever used. But even still, the fiber weed guard on it's very, very soft and it gets softer with use. In my opinion, that's no, no bueno. But again, trocar, decoy Hayabusa, I'm uh, sorry, decoy uh, finesse HD, heavy cover. In my opinion, the two best weedless wacky hooks and this is through hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of fish on each and every one of these hooks the the hooks on the definitely do not buy at regardless of the price i would never spend a penny on these hooks here i think they were on clearance at walmart a couple of years ago for like a buck i figured screw it i'll buy them i would never buy the hayabusa spin muscles again although it looks pretty cool no not a fan as far as these are concerned, I don't mind these. These are nice. These are the uh, the 329 hunger hooks, the Gamakatsus. Uh, if you really want a, a really light, light finesse hook, I think you might be best off with one of these because they do offer the lightest wire. I have broken them, so be, you know can't use heavy heavy gear with them. But for the light applications, I, I think they might be the best suited out of uh, all the other hooks on the table. And they, hold, they do hold up well. I mean, that titanium weed guard is very, very consistent. If you're using four pound test, six pound test, it's nice to have a weed guard that really is very consistent because once you get hung up, when you're using super light line, you're gonna break off. And they make them, I think, down to a size six, so they can make them pretty small sizes. All right, so with all that being said, I really hope you enjoyed that. I tried to keep it as clear and concise as possible. Um, if you liked what you saw, please hit that like button. If you haven't already, subscribe. And what's even more important and helps me the most is if you like, subscribe, and if you share. You know, if you're a member of any Facebook fishing groups, or even if you just have a regular Facebook page, uh, do me a favor, share the video on your Facebook friends list. Or if you're a member of uh, fishing forums on the internet, other message boards, uh, feel free to share my videos there. Uh, just trying to get the word out. I'm a brand new channel. I just hit 300 subscribers within you know, a little over a month. That's not too shabby, I guess. Um, have almost 175,000 minutes total viewed. So I'm, I'm starting to get a little bit of exposure and having fun doing it. And I really hope I'm helping. And as usual, as I said in the beginning, I said it in previous videos, I value your time. I know your time's valuable. And thank you very much for spending your time with me. Take care, guys.